Catherine Perante, uh, partner at Grant Thornton. And for those who don't know, Grant Thornton uh, is the national uh, auditing accounting firm, uh, mid-market leader in the United States. And uh, Catherine, why, before I start putting my foot in your mouth, why don't you tell us first what you do for Grant Thornton? Well, thank you, Jeffrey, and I'm uh, glad to be here on the show with you today. Um, with Grant Thornton, I'm a partner in their Forensic Evaluation Services Group. Uh, the Forensic Evaluation Services Group does a host of things, one including forensic services, investigations, valuations, litigation, support work, um, just a lot of interesting, non-traditional things. You know, I, I, cutting you off already, what, what a surprise. When I hear the word forensic, I think lawsuit. You're, you're, you're working for attorneys. That's correct. Uh, because it means that somebody is not trusting somebody on the other side and they need a really deep analysis that's objective. Not trusting or the parties are in dispute. They're fighting over something. Well, trust right. in dispute, you know, it's, it's, it's a similar thing. How did you get into doing this stuff? It's a highly technical field, isn't it? Uh, it is. It's very specialized. Um, I started in this, this area. I've been practicing for 35 years, but I started in the forensic evaluation area in the early 1990s. Uh, the AICPA was really pushing these niche services and encouraged practitioners to get involved and I said let's look into it and went out and got a, a number of credentials in the forensic evaluation area. Now a lot of people say they do it. Uh, are there a lot of people out there who are doing it who aren't certified evaluators? There are people that are out there doing some of this work that are not certified or credentialed which doesn't necessarily mean that they're not good or qualified they just don't have some of the training and, and background that, that I may have. So are there particular methodologies you could talk to us about, about that, that you use in, in using, doing business valuations? Yeah, there are. Um, in terms of, do you want to jump right into the methodologies or do you want to talk about... I'll you know, take it either way as long as you get to where I want to go. All right. Um, usually we, we start out with, you know, why does somebody need a business valuation? Um, right. And Steve are, is going to buy me out. Yes. Right. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And there's I don't trust Steve, and he doesn't trust me. Cash, yeah. you, you've got several covered there, but um, <laughs> there's a host of reasons why people need business valuations. Um, one of which is what you just said. You know, Steve wants to buy you out, so somebody wants to sell their business. Somebody wants to buy a business. In Steve's case, um, it might just be a merger. You and Steve may want to become partners. You have, you know, similar businesses or, or complementary businesses, and you may want to join forces. Um, another reason, and a, a very common reason, we saw a lot of this last year was for estate and gift purposes. Last year, a lot of people, because of the tax laws, they did a lot of gifting of uh, interest in privately held, you know, more family-owned type businesses. So there was need for a lot of valuation services last year, and that will continue to be ongoing. Um, also litigation, you know, you mentioned that earlier. Um, if, if you don't trust Steve or whatever, there's a lot of minority shareholders that want to get bought out of businesses. Uh, they're in a dispute with their their majority shareholder or some of their other shareholders, that's another big reason. Uh, Buy-sell agreements, another reason you might need valuations. Compensation, you know, Steve might be your key employee and you may want to give him a piece of the action. Scary thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. So there are a number of reasons. The key employee part. 